Hey guys, welcome to Book Review 169. Today I am going to be reviewing Stormy with a Chance of Fried Rice, 12 Months in Jakarta by Pat Walsh. Uh, uh, light on this video is a little messed up. Um, okay, so in this book, uh, Pat Walsh, uh, as the title suggests, spends 12 months in Jakarta. Uh, and this is sort of like the secondary book that he wrote to uh, the more... Uh, I guess you call it academic or uh, bureaucratic piece uh, that he um, did for the Indonesian government. And uh, the second piece that he wrote was not, uh, know, it's a little bit of a lie, he didn't write it. He was the translator of this thing that I believe was called Chegg. Uh, and it was a review of the atrocities that were committed in East Timor. Uh, and so he had all this time in Jakarta doing this and he, uh, wrote this book as sort of his uh, observations uh, within the country, primarily within Jakarta, but also a little bit within uh, Ike province, uh, Bali. Uh, I think he might have even gone over to Komodo Island. Um, but it kind of takes like a lighter tone. There's a lot of, uh, there's some pop culture references for sure. Um, a lot of kind of cheesy jokes, to be honest. Uh, he talks a lot about some of the people that he meets. It didn't exactly seem like he took sort of a top-down perspective, but kind of took more the perspective of um, examples of people within society that might be representative uh, of a larger whole. Um, be that, and I'm not going to remember all their names, but be that the tourist guide that kind of uh, uh, gave him a lot of different information about uh, the main cathedral and main mosque that are facing one another in Jakarta, or the woman that uh, is just uh, from, I believe, like Solo, or Central Central Java, uh, that he saw fairly regularly as a street vendor, um, and kind of her, how uh, she got by, or uh, the maid that worked for him that uh, she said was almost like a ninja, or I'm not sure that's his exact words, but um, was uh, almost, it, things would be cleaned perceptively but the process of doing it would almost be imperceptible. Um, and he said that uh, having maids is something that's actually very common within Indonesia. There being sort of a supply of cheap, or an excess supply uh, of cheap labor means that uh, there's a lot of uh, people that do that. Or for example, his taxi driver who, um, you know, everything's built on sort of this, hey, my friend, hey, my friend kind of thing. Uh, within Indonesia. Uh, a little bit of it is to rip off Westerners, but at the same time, uh, it's not necessarily as cynical as some people in the West maybe make it. Um, there's certainly a money angle to it, but uh, it's sort of kind of both. We, in the West, we tend to separate money and friendships, whereas in Indonesia, uh, they're much more intertwined. So the uh, even, even a non-Western situation, so like among two uh, people from Indonesia, two people from Java, uh, there'll be that kind of money friend uh, interaction. Um, another, uh, but the example that I was bringing up was the uh, taxi driver who uh, kind of got a little bit annoying because he gave Pat a taxi ride once um, and then kind of knew that he was a friend or a mark or however you want to spin it and uh, constantly came back to the same place to give a uh, to try to get Pat's business. Uh, let's see what else is there. Uh, get some ideas from the uh, title page. Um, oh, cream bath. Yeah, he talks about that. Like uh, the various massages and uh, skin treatments and uh, all these things uh, that uh, kind of are propagated within Indonesia. And he doesn't really understand why it doesn't. Uh, exists in the West, particularly in Australia. Uh, I will say maybe one of the reasons it doesn't exist is because Australians pay uh, $45 for a haircut. Uh, I would know. Uh, so I can't imagine what a, a cream bath would cost in Australia. Uh, let's see. Huh. Uh, yeah. I can't leave this review at five minutes. That's like way too short. Oh, the Jammu lady. Uh, Jammu, I think, is like, a, yeah, that's like a, a spice blend or like a herbal blend. Uh, kind of, 
you know, how we have like these boost smoothies in uh, the West. Well, it's not a smoothie, but what it is is it's an infused herbal drink, you know, with hot water normally, uh, with all these herbs that are uh, supposed to uh, give you the strength of Red Bull, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, renewing his visa. Oh yeah, that was kind of a funny story. He was talking about uh, how he saw the same person 15 times uh, to get a, not like an extens an extensive visa or just to get what should be just like a basic visa re renewal. So not like a, even like a permanent residency visa. Uh, flying the Baja, what is that? Uh, yeah, I'm just kind of flipping through it. He does do a few uh, poems, which I think are a little uh, self-absorbed. I don't know. He's not a very <laughs> good poet, to be honest. Uh, oh, yeah, he talks about the tsunami. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, he talked about the Ike province. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's A-E-C-H. And it is the most conservative... Um, province within all of Indonesia and actually for a long time was running a uh, independence movement um, and he kind of compared and contrasts the independence movement that happened in East Timor among a group that held a different religious affiliation that being Catholic to mainstream Java now Ike and Java are both Muslim but um, kind of their views on the Islamic religion uh, just as well as their ethnic differences uh, led to rebellion within the Ike province, but unlike East Timor, the Ike province stayed within, uh, uh, within, uh, Indonesia. Uh, let's see. He got hijacked? Hmm. Oh, hijacked because his email got hijacked. Yeah, that was, uh, kind of stupid of him. You know, you can see, like, some of these, I don't know if you can see this. Oh, some of these chapters are well, that's a little bit longer one, but they're pretty short. Uh, and so, I mean, this book's only 200 pages, and it's got maybe 20 chapters, 25 chapters, or even more than that. Yeah, so it's almost like little haikus of um, what, uh, you know, there's the street vendor. Uh, oh, yeah, it talks about sort of uh, the wealthy upper class of um, Indonesian society and let them eat golf balls. Uh he goes to uh, a golf range with some upper crust type people. Um, and rather than uh, kind of have people hired by uh, the golf club to go shag balls that have gone in the rough and need to be reset, there's actually enough poor people in Indonesia that the golf club lets them in uh, and kind of as independent contractors, they go and pick up all the golf balls and then sell them off. Just kind of a... I don't know. I mean, that's not so bad, but it just kind of is an indicator of uh, where it's at, uh, where the society's at. Uh, yeah, it kind of talks about some of the rit Muslim rituals. Uh, he kind of has an extensive bit about uh, his publisher, which is, I think, a little self-serving, but still is an insight into uh, uh, the society. I really like the old Jakarta, the capital's future. Uh, chapter, uh, because that talked about uh, kind of my interest in the, kind of the history, and uh, he visited some of the old forts, uh, and unfortunately, the, a lot of them are in a state of decay. Uh, there are a couple that are being upheld, but at the end of the chapter, he specifically mentions a warehouse uh, that was like 150 years old or something, and was definitely a, a VOC, or maybe if not VOC, a Dutch uh, um, structure. Uh, that, that was very important to the colonial period, but now it's just completely empty. Um, and uh, I think there's like a couple squatters that live in there. Uh, and that's it. Uh, let's see, what else is there? Jakarta. Oh yeah, and he also uh, kind of comments that, um, you know, Jakarta is often a, kind of so big and so um, monstrous in its scope uh, that kind of some of these old historical buildings that can be used, or he thinks should be used, as kind of like boys to hold on to um, for a society that's just crazy. You know, Jakarta is one of the most crowded uh, cities in the world. The traffic is terrible. He actually has a chapter in uh, the book about traffic, too. Um, but it's just, it's almost uh, chaos personified, if you will.
So uh, the government's trying to do some things to work on it, but uh, if you want uh, idyllic uh, circumstances, um, maybe Jakarta, if you like the action, Jakarta's for you, uh, and the headache that comes with the action. But if you want, uh, yeah, if you want uh, a relaxed life, maybe uh, that's not Jakarta. Not well, Jakarta. Unless, of course, you have a lot of money, but once you have money, money can do anything. So, uh, you know, I can't buy you happiness, but uh, kind of can. He ends the book by uh, reading the Quran, which uh, I found kind of an interesting touch. Uh, it is a Muslim country, and uh, a lot of it's dictated by the call to prayer, uh, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, by finishing his book of reading the Quran and kind of reviewing it, I felt it kind of gave. Uh, uh, it's not the way a lot of people end books, but kind of gave a different uh, spin to the end, and a creative spin, so I really like that. Uh, Stormy with a Chance of Fried Wines, 12 Months in Jakarta, been going on 11 minutes for a pretty good book, kind of a, a lighter book, but a very good book, uh, by Pat Walsh. Check it out, you guys. All right, my...